pigeonhole principle is it's a very simple idea. More stuff than places to put your stuff than at least one place will have two or more things. That's it. That's the whole principle. Got more stuff than places to put it, then one of those places is going to have to have more than one thing, right? Which means two or more. We have to double up. I mean, it's really easy to think about it this way. If I have more objects than drawers to put them into, this is why it's called the Dirichlet drawer principle, where if you have letters, you have 15 letters, but only 13 boxes. If I tried to put it as evenly as possible, I would fill up all the boxes, but I still have a letter left over. That means at least one of those boxes is going to have two. Now, on the other hand, I could also take all of the letters and jam them into one box. But it would still be true that at least one box has two or more stuff. Right? If you try to be efficient, you guarantee two. If you don't care, if you just jam them all into one, that statement is still true. So really, this is the weakest event. that The two right, is your weakest thing that can happen. It could always be more. Right? You can just put everybody into the first drawer and you don't have to worry about it. Um, stated specifically, there's two versions of this. The first theorem is the pigeonhole principle, or the Dirichlet drawer. So stuff, when, the reason why it's called the pigeonhole principle is the stuff is pigeons, and the places to put it are pigeonholes, like a little roosting nest where you just simply put the bird in. If you have more birds than places to put the birds, you, will, you have an issue, right? One of the pigeonholes is going to have to have two or more birds. And just using words like objects, so if we are given k, which is a positive integer, this represents the pigeonholes or uh, places to put stuff. And you have... k plus 1 objects. So the k represents the places that you're going to put in. So you have k places. You have k plus 1, which gets, gets the idea of more. Right? If you have k places to put it, what does it mean to have more? I've got k plus 1 or more than that. Right? So k plus 1 or more. objects and these are placed into the K boxes then at least one box has at least two or more objects. You should be able to state this definition. You should be able to understand the idea of the definition, the theorem, and you should be able to state the theorem. We have k boxes. We have k plus one or more objects for those boxes. Because I have more stuff than places, you don't have to say that, what does that mean? It means that at least one box has at least two or more, right? That's what the word, I, don't, I shouldn't have to say or more, right? If I say at least, that actually takes care of the or more, right? So in, in your mind, you're saying I'm allowed, allowed to have two, three, or however many we want. Now, imagine, on the other hand, that I could refine this a little bit. This idea of worst case scenario is this idea of trying to be as efficient as possible. 
So what would happen if I had, how would this statement change if I had five objects but ten boxes? If I wanted to, I could try to put in one at a time, right? And then I have some boxes with zero, but I'm guaranteed that I have a box with at least one, right? Now, on the other hand, what if I have 10 boxes but 11 objects? As I start to try to put it in efficiently, one, 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 right? And then I have one more object, it's going, to, what's going to be the at least? If I have 11 objects but 10 boxes, at least one box will have at least two. What if I had 21? If I was efficient, what would happen? One for everybody, that's 10. Another one, which means everybody gets two. How many have I put in? 20, but I still have one more envelope, right? I have one more object. So if I'm as efficient as possible, everybody gets one, everybody gets one. I have one left over. What's the, what's, what could we say? that at least one box has at least three. Now what if I have 22? If I'm a, if I still would have at least one has at least three. What if I get all the way up to 30? Everybody would have three, but that would be what? At least one has at least three. I could put them all into one if I want, but it's true under efficiency. But what happens the moment I hit 31? At least one has at least four. So that worst case scenario happens when we're trying to be as efficient as possible, and then I could get something better than just simply this statement right here. I should be able to get something better than at least one has at least two, always. So the next theorem is the generalized pigeonhole principle. And what we could say is, again, k is a positive integer, because we have to have some places to put it. And what we have now is, if n objects are placed into k boxes, then what changes here is this. At least one box has at least ceiling n over k objects. And that really means or more, right? At least. So if I wanted to, I could suppose just go ahead and get rid of that or more. Just say objects. What's the only thing that changes statement-wise? What's the big change? That and that. That's the big change, right? Okay, so if I have, if n is smaller than k, like I have five letters and ten drawers, what's five divided by ten? A half ceiling function does what? Rounds up. Rounds up. So the pigeonhole principle allows me to, just the pigeonhole principle just simply says, at least one thing will have at least two. And that's all you talk about. If you have more stuff than this, at least one has at least two. This allows us to have direct corollaries to talk about functions, right? That'd be like this. If you have more stuff in your domain than in your codomain, what does that mean? If you pair them off, what has to happen? What would the pigeonhole principle tell me? You have more stuff in your domain than your codomain. And think about drawing arrows, right? So if I have one, two, three, four over here, but only one, two, right? They pair. What happens the moment I have more things over here than over here? What has to happen? At least one, what's the box? The codomain. 
at least one guy has to have more than one pre-image. If you have more pre-images than images, at least one image will have to have two or more pre-images. What does that immediately tell you about this being a one-to-one -one function? It's not. So if you have more in your domain than you do in your codomain, it's impossible to be a one-to-one -one function. It's a straightforward application of the pigeonhole principle. More stuff than this, it has to. <laughs> Immediately, you have to have double pairs. But the big part of the pigeonhole principle application is you've got to ask what represents a box and what represents an object. For the function, the box is the images, the stuff in the codomain. What represents the objects? The pre-images, the stuff in the codomain, sorry, the domain. 